On this week's episode, we'll be talking about two of the world's once largest airships ever built, the USS Akron and USS Macon, which were built in the early 1930s primarily as aircraft carriers and for military reconnaissance. Now, the United States had no interest in Zeppelins until Allies captured the German Zeppelin L-49 towards the end of World War I. With an Allied victory, it was agreed that Germany would build the U.S. an airship and allow the U.S. Navy to use the same plans to build one of its own, which it did by 1923, called the USS Shenandoah, ZR-1. The U.S. military later commissioned the Akron class of airships in 1926, and by 1928, the Goodyear Zeppelin Company was awarded the contract in a joint effort with Germany's Luftsenbau Zeppelin Company in order to utilize its technology. Want to know more fascinating details? Well, keep it right here on History and Relics. The USS Akron, ZRS-4, was a helium-filled rigid airship of the U.S. Navy in the lead ship in her class, which operated between September 1931 and April 1933. It was the world's first purpose-built flying aircraft carrier, carrying F-9C Sparrowhawk fighter planes, which could be launched and recovered while it was in flight. The Goodyear Zeppelin Corporation, a subsidiary of Akron, Ohio's Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, received a U.S. Navy contract to build a hangar large enough to accommodate the manufacturing of two military aircrafts larger than any other previously built in the U.S., which would later come to be the USS Akron and USS Macon. As such, the Goodyear Air Dock was built. The Goodyear Air Dock was built on 60 acres of land set aside by the city of Akron. The Goodyear Air Dock was the largest building in the world without interior supports, with a floor area equal to eight and a half acres, or the equivalent of seven football fields. Construction of the USS Akron, ZRS-4, and USS Macon, ZRS-5, began on October 31, 1929. A team of experienced German airship engineers, led by chief designer Carl Arnstein, instructed and supported design and construction of both airships. With an overall length of 785 feet, Akron and her sister ship Macon were among the largest flying objects ever built. Although LZ-129 Hindenburg and LZ-130 Graf Zeppelin II were some 18 feet longer and slightly more voluminous, the two German ships were filled with hydrogen. And so the U.S. Navy crafts still hold the world record for the largest helium-filled airships. The Akron had eight propellers, each powered by a 560 horsepower engine, and was meant to be used for reconnaissance, as well as launching and retrieving Sparrowhawk fighter planes while in flight near enemy territory. Its structure was based on a deep ring design, which made the ship heavier but more durable, partly in response to the crash of the USS Shenandoah near Caldwell, Ohio, that occurred on September 3, 1925. On November 7, 1929, Rear Admiral William A. Moffett, the chief of the U.S. Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics, drove the Golden Rivet into the main ring of ZRS-4. Erection of the hull sections began in March 1930. Secretary of the Navy Charles Francis Adam III chose the name Akron for the city near where it was being built and Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Ernest Lee Jenke, announced it in May 1930. 
On August 8, 1931, Akron was launched, floating free from the hangar floor, and christened by First Lady Lou Henry Hoover, the wife of President of the United States, Herbert Clark Hoover. The maiden flight of Akron took place around Cleveland on the afternoon of September 23, 1931, with Secretary of the Navy Adams and Rear Admiral Moffett on board. The Macon was christened on March 11, 1933, by Jeanette Witten Moffett, wife of Rear Admiral Moffett, and later took its first flight on April 21, 1933. The Akron airship made 10 trial flights, including a 2,000-mile journey over 48 hours to St. Louis, Chicago, and Milwaukee. On October 21st, the Akron left the Goodyear Zeppelin air dock for the Naval Air Station with Lieutenant Commander Charles E. Rosenthal in command, arriving the next day. On Navy Day, October 27, 1931, the Akron was commissioned as a Navy vessel. Throughout 1932, it demonstrated impressive range, but was plagued by poor performance on scouting exercises. It was on a routine calibration mission along the Atlantic coast on April 4, 1933, that the ship was caught in a storm, and during a struggle against powerful wind gusts, its lower tail fin was torn off in the water, and the ship crashed into the ocean off the coast of New Jersey. 73 of the 76 men on board, including Rear Admiral William Moffat, were killed. Many perished in the water following the crash, as the ship was not equipped with life jackets or rafts. This was more than twice the death toll of the Hindenburg explosion that would occur several years later in 1937. Going forward, the USS Macon and other airships received life jackets to avoid a repeat of this tragedy. When Macon was damaged in a storm in 1935 and subsequently sank after landing in the sea, 81 of its 83 crew were saved. Despite the tragic end to the Akron and a similar loss of its sister ship, Macon, the Goodyear Zeppelin Company continued its work. During World War II, the company manufactured 104 airships for the military at its Akron facility, and following the war, continued making airships as well as other types of aircraft and aircraft parts. Zeppelins transitioned to being used almost exclusively for advertising purposes, and in 1966, the firm created the Skytacular, a four-color sign that could be flown from blimps and read especially at night by people on the ground. Beginning in the 1950s and continuing to this day, Goodyear blimps can often be seen at major sporting events and remain a familiar sight to Ohioans as well as others across the globe. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID, History, and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.